This is going to be an instructional video showing you how to put a Predator bull bar on your Suzuki Jimny JB74. Let's get going. And there is the kit. Only one problem, the tow hooks came black and they should be red. Oh well. Okay, first up, you got some clips in here, three of them down the edge and two bolts in there. We use our trim tool to get between them. You can use a flat blade screwdriver, but the trim tool is nice and easy. There was one there, one further on. And up in here, two screws uses an M10 spanner. There's one more clip right in here. Now under the car, we've got three bolts that have an M10 head. Take them off now. Now you got those three off from the bottom, pull and you see that clip in there? You do that for both sides, then all the way along, and we can pull the bumper off. All right, so we gotta take the grill off to get some clips out. So okay, with the bonnet open, we're gonna remove two little clips in here using a screwdriver or our trim tool. Now we take those clips out because it's holding the back of the grill. Please keep them. Then we are going to take off on inside there, there is the indicator uh, harness. We're going to squeeze that and take that off. And these little clips here, if you have a good look, it's a quarter turn with a screwdriver to release them. Once we do those three things, we can pull the grill off, which will allow us to get to the clips on top of the bumper. can access this from behind without taking all the hoses off there. That's the grill off. We're then going to take these two clips off here, which will show us the clips underneath. And then underneath here are some clips that we're going to pry off and that'll allow us to pull the bumper off later. So there's one, two, three, it looks like four clips. Now, you might find it easier to take off these clips here, pull this whole plastic bracket off to get to the clips underneath. Uh, I've already taken the clips off underneath, so what we're gonna do is put them all back in because we need to put the grill back on. So remember when you put your grill back on to plug in your indicator. And then And don't forget your clips up top. Now to close the bonnet. Now we've pulled off the clips from the outside already. So the bumper is really just going to be able to come right off now. And then we have to unplug the fog lights and your headlight sprayers. So it should just pull right off. Yep. That is. All right, so we're gonna unplug our light loom here. Get it around this bad boy. Manipulate it around the liner there. I'll get you a better view. So inside there, you'll have your cable here. Basically just squeeze it together, pull it off. And then uh, we'll take our fog lights off as well.
Now, you gotta be careful with the headlight washer because it will spray on you. Now there's a little clip that you need to pull your hose out through here and you just pinch it and pull it and it will come. But we're gonna lose a bit of water. So make sure you have a bucket or you can tie it up. And there's one cable tie there that we just need to cut and we can pull it off. Careful not to cut the actual hose itself. Pull it up, and the bumper is released, and good. Next, we're going to pull off the air guide here, which brings air into your in um, intercooler <laughs> radiator. Again, three clips. Just prying these off here. And two more on the bottom. Now we'll take the fog lights out. All right, we're gonna take the fog light out. So you've got a few screws you gotta take out here. Now we unplug, pressing in, pull off, fog lights out. We still need the loom here, so we're gonna unclip it from the bumper. Boom. Now two more things to do with the bumper beside. One, take the number plate off. Two is the headlight washers. So they're fairly easy to pull out. They basically just unclip so you can get your tool and just lift up the edge here that clip there and you pull it straight out and then there's two clips on the side pinch them together pull it out so keep it all together because that will be going into the new bar okay time to put the mounts on I've got the left side on already but I'll show you how to do the right hand side here now Suzuki has given us this little nub in here horn coming out we do need to drill some holes. So we have a, a crush tube that's gonna go through the chassis. What happens then is when you tighten up these bolts here, you don't want that to crush in and eventually uh, fatigue and fail. So we're gonna put a crush tube in there, but to get the crush tube in, we have to drill out these holes. So these two holes here, we need to drill them out to 20 mil. I have a step drill here. A step drill, you can get them at Bunnings, any hardware store, up to 20 mil. Uh, you can go a lot bigger if you need to, but we need 20 mil. Easy to use, put them in any drill. Let's you drill bigger holes than what your standard drill set can go. So, and then on the bottom, on the inside, we just need to open up that hole, the top one's good. We will be also be drilling a hole up here, but I'll show you when we go through there. So first up is drilling through here. Now, I got my glasses. Don't forget glasses, because metal shavings in your eye, yeah, no good. Okay, now it's loud, it's annoying, so I'm just gonna show you start. Um, use some sort of coolant. Uh, have fun. Okay, we've drilled. I'm gonna clean all the swarf off. Now, very, very important, don't forget this step. Get yourself a paint pen. And everywhere you drilled, you gotta run over with paint. Otherwise, it'll eventually start to rust. So, get yourself a rag and clean up all the coolant that you've put in there. And get your paint pen and you paint all the exposed edges. And then, don't forget to let it dry before you put your crush tube and your bolt through. This paint pen's a little crap. I'm gonna have to get another one. All right, first one up, this bracket here. So making sure you have the right one, that little half moon there, 
kind of goes around the bend there. So really what we're doing is getting the right washers, M10. And we're gonna feed a nut through the back, like that. And you can basically put on now. An easy way to get it started is grab yourself a nut, sorry, a bolt, one of the long bolts, and put it through and it'll hold it in place. Then hold the nut from inside and you can put, if it ever starts, your bolt through. We're just keeping it loose for now. Now the next bit is a bit of a stack up. So we have our toe point. Now your toe point's got a kick in it. So this is gonna go flat against the bracket here and it kicks to the outside. Um, we'll put the bolts in the back later. Um, again, these are supposed to be red. So that's why this one's red, this one's supposed to be red. This little plate goes in behind this hook here. It's different on the other side where you don't need the spacer plate, you just put it straight through. So what we're gonna do is take this bracket, right? Now, again, it kicks out like that, so you have that C-channel shape, and it goes on the outside. We're gonna grab both of our bolts, and we're gonna feed it through, and then we're gonna take them through the toe point, and then these two here with a round hole, and then you're gonna feed your two press tubes, and then as one whole package, you push it through. There you go. Now, make sure you get a nut to hold them in place. Again, you don't need to do any of these tight. Now, what we're gonna do then is, basically, we're holding this bracket up here and we're gonna mark that hole there. So we can get our same paint pen and we wanna have it match the other side so we can go up. So if you push it all the way to the top and then we're gonna mark it there. What we're gonna do then is take this bracket off center pot it and drill it. Time to drill. Uh, this size uh, and um, M10 is going through there so we'll drill out to 10 mil. Okay, don't forget to clean up the edges. Wipe it down and our trusty paint pen, which I lost my pen. Again, use our paint pen so we don't get any rust. You can get a paint pen to match your car, but to tell you the truth, it doesn't matter because it's gonna be covered by a bracket and a nut. So black is good. All right, now you see we still got the crush tubes in there. We're gonna go and put everything back on. Now that hole's drilled and then we can tighten the bolts. torque up the bolts. And we'll be putting another one through there, an M10 by 30. And then we're going to put two bolts through here on the outside in. And that is going to lock the two brackets together. Now putting the toe point on, well finishing it off, Behind this wheel liner here, you see the bolts. Now, it's pulling against, one. Well, you got these bolts here, but it's pulling against this hook here. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna line up the spacer from behind. So we put one through, and then we put a nut on. Leave it loose for now. What that's gonna do is that spacer is gonna pinch it. So once you put all three bolts on, M12s this time, you'll be able to pinch it. And once you tighten them all up, it'll squeeze on it nice and tight. All right, so we've torqued up the bolts in the back, all three together. So they squeeze that plate and sandwich it on the hook. And that's it, this mount's done. We'll leave that bolt off because it's gonna share with the outer brace for the wing. Now it's time to get the bull bar ready. Now we're gonna kit out the bar. 
Um, this one, as you know, it takes a light in the middle. There's an Offred Animal 22 inch light bar we're gonna put inside there. Um, you don't have to run lights on top. You can run spotties on top if you want. And in this case, we're gonna run the hoop with another 22 inch light in there. Um, and then we're gonna put the grill on with the foggies. I'll show you how to do that. I've already done one side, we'll do the other side. But yeah, this is quite easy. Once you put the brackets on the light, you just put, put it in and we'll do up the bolts. Now to put the headlight washer in, all you basically do, push it in from underneath, done. And we'll plug it in obviously, uh, the hose and we're good. All right, we're gonna put the uh, factory fog lights and your DRLs in the brackets. Basically pop it in, put your bolts in, and then we're gonna line it up. So M6 button head cap screws go here. And when we put it in here, you make sure that bit there lines up with a corner here. So this is for the left hand. And then we're gonna put two M8s in the top and then we can put it in the bar. Put the uh, fog light housing now inside the bar. So we got our M6 by 16 button heads. Basically drop it in. I like to do, hold the bar, hold the housing in place and put a nut in from behind. It's easier to do the bottom ones first. If you can get your hands in there, and then that will start. And you line up the nuts and the holes. Cool. And yeah, we'll torque those up and it's ready to go with the light. Now, if you're wanting to keep it flat on top, you can. Or if you want to run round lights on top, you can. But I'm running the stealth hoop. So I put another 22 inch light in here. It's easiest to do this now. So drop the hoop on top with my bolts and my nuts. And you get a whole different look on the bar. And you get good lights. So we'll tighten those up. And the last thing to do, we have a little brace that we're gonna put on the back. And then the bar is ready to go on the car. Last thing before we put the bar on is our top hoop support. So once your light's already in, you basically just line this up. We're using M6 button heads by 16. Put two of them to the top. Anyway, this encloses this area here which makes it strong, especially when you're running round lights on top. If you're not running round lights on top, you probably don't need it. But if you're running round lights on top, what it'll do is it'll strengthen that whole area and prevent your lights from vibrating. Now, you can do this bit by yourself lifting it on, but you don't wanna scratch anything. Or you can use a mate to help you put it on. I'm gonna cheat with this table because I'm by myself. But yeah, best thing, use two people or a table. And basically you push the bar on in between the mounts. And then we're gonna get it to where we like it. And then we're gonna put our bolts in uh, and torque them up. So what we do now is we basically angle it. So we have about a 15 to 20 mil gap between the bar and the body. That way when we're flexing off road or even going over rough bumps, we're not gonna actually destroy the car and hit it against the bar. All right, we do need to trim the wheel well liner. So from about here and just across, sharp razor blade. And you, if you tug while you're doing it, it comes off nice and easy. Done. Okay, now we got the bar on. We've put it in the position we want. There's little clips underneath the flares. If you want the bar higher, it looks better. I highly recommend you trim them with a uh, knife. Box cutter. Now, if you are putting an ATV winch in, great job, you've done the right choice because your car is light and you want a lighter winch. Can go straight in now with the bar on. However, like that one over there, if you're putting a full-size winch in, like an 8,000 pound winch, a normal full-size one, you actually have to put the winch on the bar before you put it on the car. And then you'll need help of like a trolley or even two people to lift it on because it's pretty heavy then. So I highly recommend you put an ATV winch in, but it will take a normal winch as well. You just have to put that on before the bar goes on the car. Because we're putting an ATV winch in today, we're gonna put it in after. So we've put the bar on, put it in position where we want, 
and it's time to lift on the winch. Now this is uh, a worn Axion 5,500 pound, which is two and a half times the capacity of the vehicle. Great for this size vehicle. So what we do is we just plop it on. There's two sets of holes here, one for the big one winch and one for the small winch. So what's easy to do, what you should do is run all your cables through the back of the winch or through the back of the bar first. That way it's not in the way and you can just lift the winch in. Now, once the winch is put in, you can put the bolts in. And we got these, so all winches are supplied with their own bolts, by the way. So you just run those in. And the, if you have uh, the Warren Axion or a different ATV winch, you will put the connector on the mesh panel. If you're running a normal size winch, you have to relocate the control box under the bonnet. We do supply a bracket to put it off the side of here if it's small, but most of them are fairly big and there's not a lot of room in there and you will need to relocate under the bonnet, but only for the full size winches. If you're smart, you got the ATV winch, no need. Also, if you're fitting a full size winch, you will need to uh, rotate the gearbox forward so the clutch lever is easily accessible in the front. All right, got all those on. Next, we'll torque up those and then we will put the mesh panel on and then the bash plate and then the outside. Okay, we've got the winch in there. We've run all the wires up to the battery and we're ready to continue on. Now, mesh plate first. What we do is we always feed the cable through the fair lead. Ah, actually, put your number plate flip together. Your number plate on your flip. It's a lot easier to do when it's off. And then we're going to put that on our mesh plate. It's just two M6s. Okay, now, mesh plate. What we do, with all the cables out of the way. Now there's three bolts up top and two on the bottom. The easiest thing to do is you don't do the bottom ones now because that's shared with the bash plate. What you're gonna do is you're gonna move, line it up. I can do it with the top ones now. Now, M8 by 20 button head cap screws here. Uses a five mil Allen key. Just keep them loose for now. Once this is in, we'll plug everything in with the winch and then we'll move on the bash plate. Okay. Okay, time for the bash plate. So the bash plate has four bolts in the front and three underneath factory gun. So MH to the front, there's threaded inserts in the bar and then same on the bottom threaded inserts that were factory ones. So all we basically do is hold it in place and do it with the bolts. Now the last thing to fit is the wing support. These two here connect on the bottom and the top and then go to that hole that you drilled on the side of the car. That way, if your car takes a side impact from a tree or an embankment when you're going off-road, or maybe even another car, what's going to happen is that's going to resist it. So your wing will stay nice and strong. It doesn't affect the crash compliance on the front, so it's really just for a side impact. So we do have M8 by 20. So what we're going to do is place that in here. And then put the bolt on the inside. I'll do that off camera because it's boring. Okay, so we've tightened up the bolt on the top and the bottom. You can use your Allen key around there and then put it all the way in. Tighten that up. Now, 
cool little trick is we've put the M8 through there that goes in through the body. Now, if you have a long extension, you can actually not have to use a spanner, go through the high lift jack hole. There we go. Okay, so we're basically done. Just gonna make sure the winch works. We lift up our uh, number plate flip. Now we've mounted the hand controller right here on the front, which makes it nice and easy to access. Blue light on the winch. Works. Make sure we cover that up. Okay, that's it. Off-road animal predator bar fit. Don't forget your logo plate. You paid good money for this. You want to show people that you got the good stuff, not the crap. Off an animal logo, the badge. That's it. Predator bar installed, ready to hit the tracks. Let's go.